solltest. Good morning, Impact. Good morning, Impact. We just want to thank everybody coming in early today for this special service. We're so excited. We've been in the Lord's face all week long. We're excited. We're just thankful for what God has done this week. But we're so excited for what he's going to do. So let's just stand all over the building. Let's look into the Lord. Father, we just thank you on today, God. God, we thank you that you're an awesome God. Lord, we thank you that you're a righteous God. Lord, we thank you that you're a holy God. And so, Lord, we just come to you on today. We say thank you. Thank you for being God and God alone, God. So we just thank you for just how you just keep doing like you do, Father. So, Lord, we just thank you because we know that this is the day that you have made, Lord. So we're rejoicing and we're glad in it. So, Lord, we just thank you because we've come to magnify you on today, Lord. We come to give you praise, God. We come to give you glory because you're worthy, Lord. So we thank you, God. We extol you, God. Lord, we just get out of sight of ourselves, Lord, even as we come on today. Lord, we come to worship you. Lord, we come to give you honor. Lord, we come to give you praise. Lord, we come to give you glory. Father, we thank you that you kept us, Lord. Lord, even when we couldn't keep ourselves, Father. Father, we thank you that you stilled the adventure, Father. Father, we thank you that you just put a hedge of protection around us. Lord, we thank you that you took care of our homes, Father. Father, we thank you that you took care of the workplace, Father. Father, we thank you that you just took care of our children, Father. Oh, Father, we just thank you how you just keep on making ways, God. Over and over and over and over and over, God. We give you glory, God. Lord, we give you praise because you're worthy to be praised, Father. So, Lord, we just thank you on today. Lord, we don't have enough tongues to say thank you, God. We don't have enough tongues to say thank you, God. But we still lift you up because from the rising of the sun until the going down of the sun, your name is worthy to be praised. So we enter. We enter into your house, God. We rush into your house, God. We rush into your presence, God. And Lord, we just thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. It's in Jesus' name we ask it all. Amen, 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 amen. So we are so excited today because we are having a special service. A special service, and we know we've started about an hour early, but we just are thankful that we're going to be able to go to the big state of Texas where our pastor will be ministering the word at the Potter's House of Dallas, Texas. Amen. So we're thankful for that. We didn't want to... Uh, we wanted to stay connected. We've been connected all week long. We've been together uh, as we were in with higher ground, always abounding, abounding assemblies this week. And so uh, we just wanted to, this to be a special service today. And so we're going to join them in about a minute. We're going to flip it over to the Potter's House in Dallas, Texas. We're going to be in worship with them. We're going to be in service. And then we'll come back here to Nashville in just a few minutes. Amen. Amen. We're going to just we're going to just flip it over to them right now. They're probably in pre-service, but we're going to flip it over to them in just a few minutes. So amen. You may be seated. You don't have a whole lot of time to think about it, but I want you to think about it fast and be a part of it. Listen, just put it like this. If you feel like you're called to the ministry, 
come to FISM. In fact, we have another uh, program for all of those who are not necessarily here physically on the campus, but you want to be a, a part of that learning process and that learning module. We have a certification program that's also a part of that. So now you don't necessarily have to live here yes, in the DFW area. You can be all over the world and literally we have graduated people from all over the world awesome. who have awesome. become a part of FISM. And so you'll still have that two year uh, 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 impression, that two year uh, time of training. And so it's a powerful thing. We're going to do this this year. We have never done this before, but we are adding some of Bishop's books to our curriculum this year. Awesome. We're adding SOAR. Awesome. We're adding Don't Drop the Mic. Okay. We're adding uh, uh, Disruptive, Disruptive Thinking. thinking. Yes, yeah, sir. yeah, and we're adding, we're adding uh, Crush instinct. instinct. No, okay. instinct. Okay. We're adding instinct. Yeah. And so all of those are going to be a part of it. We add leadership principles. Yes, we sir. add business and economics to our program. It is a well-rounded program, and you will become yeah. a well-rounded minister here at the Potter's House Indeed, of Fort Worth. You will. And I want to thank you, sir. Potter's House School of Ministry. I thought I was back at Fort Worth, y'all. It's okay. You, you so you got comfortable already now. Okay, yes. okay. Well, listen, thank you so yes, much for joining you. us. We want to also thank Megacare for joining yes, us this you, morning. Megacare. It's always a blessing to have yes. our auxiliaries and our departments yes. represented with us. And again, there's so many different ways yes. to get involved here. So you many have no different excuse. ways, yes. And the, and the most important way to get involved is worship. Yeah. You ready for worship, yeah. Casey? I'm ready, you ready for, worship. for worship. I like, won't if, go if ready. Like me, you ready. You, are you ready for worship? <laughs> I'm ready for worship. Yes. Listen, I know they're ready, but before we do, I just want you all to know that this message is translated in over 90 different languages. Yes. So if English is not your original language, yes. go ahead and type in the link at the bottom of the screen to be edified in your yes. native yes. tongue. Yes. Let's go, go to, to worship. worship. Yes. Y'all, let's go to worship. Amen. Thank you. Well, it's another day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, Potter's House, good morning and praise the Lord. I dare you just take the next 30 seconds and just clap your hands and rejoice. Some may think it's cliche, but it really is just another day that the Lord has kept me. Can you just turn and face somebody around you tell them, it's, it's another day that the Lord has kept me. I know it may not mean much to you, but when you consider all that's going on in the world, when you consider what's happening in your own community, the violence, the, the wars, the rumors of wars, the fact that he kept me, the fact that he woke me up this morning, it, it moves me to give him praise. Can somebody, just, can somebody just bless the name of Jesus if you're grateful? Only if you're grateful, lift your voice, lift your hands, shout unto God with the voice of triumph. I got news for you, he's been that good. I said he's been that good, church. He's been that good. Come on, somebody testify really quick to the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you for your faithfulness. Huh? We thank you for your faithfulness, Jesus. We thank you for your faithfulness. Morning by 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 morning. New mercies we see. New mercies we experience. New mercies we receive. It's of your goodness. Hallelujah. He's worthy today. We invite you down to this altar as we go forth in worship. I believe God's going to do something special today. Anybody else believe that? Come on, since we're here, we might as well get all God has for us today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's humble our hearts. Father, we thank you. We honor your great name. We esteem you high. We lift up praise to you, O oh God, because you are deserving of it. Hallelujah. From the rising of the sun to the setting down of the very same, the name of the Lord is worthy of praise, O oh God. We thank you today for all those who have come and gathered, O oh God, whether they're in this room or they're on their computer or they're on their phone, wherever they are around this world, we thank you, O oh God, that by your spirit we all united as one and we've come for one purpose, hallelujah. We've come to lift you up. We've come to magnify you. We've come to bless your name. We've come to lift you high. We've come to magnify you. We've come to glorify you. We've come to worship you. We've come into your presence, O oh God. 
And we thank you, O oh God, that those even who are coming in this room and those who are coming through technology, that, Father, we thank you through your presence, they don't have to leave the same. Hallelujah. Someone's coming, oh God, broken, oh God, but we thank you that they're going to leave healed. Hallelujah. Someone is coming, oh God, with questions, oh God, and we thank you that by your spirit, before they leave this service, they're going to get the answer that they need. Hallelujah. We thank you that you still answer prayer. Ha. We thank you, oh God, that you still meet needs. Hallelujah. We thank you, oh God, that you still deliver. Hallelujah. We thank you, oh God, that you still heal. Hallelujah. We thank you, oh God, that you still keep. We thank you, oh God, that you still save. Hallelujah. We thank you, oh God, that you put broken hearts back together. We thank you that you still open blinded eyes. We thank you that you still unstop deaf ears. We thank you that you're still making the lame walk. You have all power. Yeah, no. Hallelujah. We're not ignorant of your mercy. We understand that we don't stand here in this room, oh God, by our own strength or power, but it's only by your grace. Hallelujah. It's only because you spared us. It's only because you kept us. It's only because you protected us from dangers seen and unseen that we stand here today. So, Father, bless this service. Father, would you have your way? Would you move in our midst? <laughs> Would you blow our minds today? Father, we pray, oh God, even today that you would surprise us. Hallelujah. Do something, do something miraculous in our midst. Do something miraculous in our midst today. And we will give you glory. And we will give you praise. Somebody do it now. We will give you worship. We will give you honor. In the name of Jesus, all the grateful hearts, shout out loud. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of y'all ready to worship? Come on, let me see your hands. The altar is still open. There's plenty of room. We're going to go before God and sing today a new worship song. We're going to teach it to you. And once you get it, come on, sing it with us. Hallelujah. Song simply says that he's a great and mighty God. He is the great and mighty God. He's given a name that's above all names. He is king and he is Lord. Hallelujah. He's a great and mighty God. He's the great and mighty God. If he's been great and mighty in your life, I dare you to just slip up your hands and honor the Lord. Hallelujah. A simple song of worship. Let's lift it together. It says, great and mighty is our God, is our God. Great and mighty is our God, is our God. You say it. Come on. Great and mighty is our God. Is our God. That's it, church. Great and mighty is our God. You sound beautiful, church. Let's lift it again. Come on. Say, great and mighty is our God. Is our God. Yes, great and mighty is our God. Is our God. Lift it up, church. Great and mighty yes. is our God. Yes. Hallelujah. Our God. He's our God today. Great and mighty is our God. Hallelujah. Let's declare this. Come on. Say, Savior, Savior is our God, is our God. He's the Savior, Savior is our God, is our God. You say, Savior, Savior is our God. That's it. Is our God. Yes, God. Savior, Savior is our God. One more time. Lift it up. They say, say, Savior, Savior is our God, He's our God. Yes, Savior, Savior is our God, is our God. Sing it. Savior, Savior is our God, yes. is our God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Savior, Savior is our God. Let's declare this. Ruler, ruler is our God, is our God. Ruler, ruler is our God, is our God. Say We're going to declare it again. Come on. He's the ruler, ruler is our God, is our God. Yes, ruler, ruler is our God, is our God. Lift it up. Come on, let's declare this with authority. Come on. Jesus, Jesus is our God, 
is our God, yes. Jesus, Jesus is our God, is our God. Say, Jesus, Jesus, we are not ashamed of the name of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Say it again, church, come on. Jesus, Jesus. Hey, he's our God. Jesus, Jesus. Lift it up. Jesus, Jesus. I hear you, church. Yes. Yeah, Jesus, Jesus is our God. He's our God. Come on, let's declare this with hands lifted up. Come on, say it. He's high and lifted up. Say it.
all power and majesty declare. Come on, to our God. We ascribe glory to our God, say to our God. We're not ashamed to lift our hands. We're not ashamed to testify to our God. He's been faithful, he's been faithful, say to our God. Every hallelujah, every hallelujah belongs to our God. Yeah. To our God, to our God. Last time, declare it. To our God, we give glory. To our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to our God. Praise be to our God. Glory belongs to our God. All power, dominion, and authority belongs to our God. Hallelujah. Come on, church, just slip those hands up if you don't mind. I'm going to invite you to just close your eyes and take the next few seconds and recall what God has been to you. As God, he is unlimited. By that I mean somebody over in this corner knows him as God the healer. Someone over in this section knows him as God, the provider. <laughs> All of us know him as God, the keeper. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. And as he is to you, thank him accordingly. He's our savior. He's our father. He's our Lord. He's our keeper. He's our healer. He's our deliverer. He's our deliverer. I don't know where that is right there, but he's our deliverer. He's our deliverer. He's our deliverer. He's our deliverer. We have no reason to be bound because God is our deliverer. And Father, we worship you as we know you to be God in our lives. We call you today. Say. up church you are my savior the one you save the one you save hallelujah has come to honor the one you save has come to worship hallelujah declare this to church he is my healer lifted up he Yes, yes. The one you heal, yes, the one you heal has come, has come to honor you. The one you heal, the one you heal has come to has come, come to worship. Come on, let's lift it higher. Call him helper. Helper, help. Has he helped anybody in this room? Come on, declare it. Help. A very help in the time of trouble. You're my present help. My present help. The one you helped. Come on. The one you helped has 
come to honor. Praise, come on, call him father. Somebody call him father. You're my heavenly father. There's no one like my father. The one you raised, the one you raised, hallelujah, has come. We've come to lift you high, the one you pray. Oh. Come on, let's lift this praise. All hands extended to heaven as we call him. Jesus, Jesus. In one accord, we call the name of Jesus. Jesus, you are Jesus, you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus. Hallelujah. The one you love, the one you love has come, has come to you. We've come for no other reason but to worship. Oh, has come to worship. Come on, from your belly this time, declare his name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. The greatest name, the greatest name Jesus yeah yeah yes as we call him his presence fills the room Jesus Jesus the ones you love yes the ones you love has come hallelujah the one on everybody with one voice as we worship together say oh Declare his name one more time. Say Jesus, Jesus. Hey, hey. Something happens when we call the name of The Spirit fills this room as we call Jesus. The one you love, the one you love has come to honor. One more time, I feel something about to break. Come on, lift those hands and call his name Jesus. Hey, hey. Yeah, no, no, no. The most powerful name we know, Jesus, Jesus. Hey, hey. Yeah, no. At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. Every tongue confess that he is Lord. Extended and let's call the name Jesus. Yes, yes, Jesus, 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 we call you. Hey, hey, Jesus, 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 we call you. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, we call you. Jesus, we call you. Jesus, Jesus, Father, King, Lord, Priest, Ruler, God, Sacrifice, the Lamb that was slain. Jesus, we are not ashamed. We are not ashamed. We are not ashamed of it. Jesus, Jesus. 
it up church the one the one you has come has come to worship the one you love the one you love has come to honor you the one you loved let's hear the house sing come on the one you love the one Just a moment and open our mouths and just begin to utter praise unto the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and give him the glory because he's worthy to be praised. Because he's worthy to be praised, to bless, to honor his name, to exalt him, to lift him up. Hallelujah. We came to honor him. We we didn't just come into a building to look at each other, we came to honor him. He is the object of our adoration. He is the subject of our affection. He is the purpose of our being. The apostle said, it is in him I live. I move and I have my being. I couldn't move without him. I couldn't catch my breath if he didn't give it to me. Come on, Potter's house, and let's bless the name of our God and give him the glory because he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. While you're standing, before you sit down, I, I didn't tell you to wear them high heel shoes. So endure hardness as a good soldier, Jesus Christ. But would you help me welcome our streaming audience that's streaming live from around the world. We welcome you to the Potter's House this morning. We translate into 90 different languages and we have people in every time zone in every country watching. Oh, you can do better than that. You just came from downtown. Come, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, let's thank God for his goodness. Oh, we bless his name, we bless his name, we bless his name. He's worthy to be praised. Shout unto the Lord, somebody. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. 
Yeah. That's what he meant when he said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Glory to God. Anybody got a praise bubbling up on the inside? My God, my God, my God, my God, my God. I thank him for his goodness. I thank him for his grace. I thank him for his mercy. I thank him for his love. God has been good to me. I don't know about you, but he's brought me through some stuff. I don't even know how I got through it. But he made a way out of no way. And I owe him the praise for the things that I know he did. That I know that he did. That I know that I know that he did. Sometimes I got out and I didn't even know how I got out. God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. <laughs> Oh, yeah, for the things he has done. My God, my God. Hallelujah. 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 Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Sounds like it's somebody else that he brought through. Sounds like I'm not the only one in the room that God brought through. Sounds like there's another witness in the building today that the Lord we serve is not just historical, but he's a living Savior. He's an active Savior. He's a responsive Savior. Shout yeah! Let me behave myself, but I feel, I feel glory in this place now. I feel healing in this place. I feel deliverance in this place. If you're watching online, you ought to grab your healing. You ought to grab your deliverance. You ought to grab your glory. God wouldn't be in the room if he didn't come to do something. He didn't come. He didn't come for our entertainment. He didn't come for our pleasure, our enjoyment. Whenever God comes in the room, he comes to move something. He comes to shake something. He comes to heal something. He comes to loose something. So if you want to be loose this morning. You have to look over me this morning. I just come back from Columbus, Ohio for our holy convocation. And I tell you, we had so much church in there, I didn't know whether to shout or do a somersault. God was just that strong in the building. Can you say amen? The high ground always abounding assemblies, holy convocation uh, convened in Columbus, Ohio, and we had such a great time. And I'm very proud to say, that we had a cadre of both elders and ministers and deacons that have just been consecrated to help lift up the service. Would you stand? Would you stand the hybrid of all of you who have certificate, license, ordained, elders, deacons, ministers, church? We got new fighters, new warriors, credentialed and ready to go, ready to bind the enemy and plead the blood. Come on, help them celebrate. Pastor Bishop, Pastor Robinson said some of them graduated past the test come, Lottie, and some of them made it. Thank you, Lottie. But they made it. Come on, to God be the glory for the things that he has done. Grateful to God for the biblical excellence that is required to minister and that we work so diligently to perfect and to develop, but also the character and the anointing and the unction and the commitment that goes along with being a minister. You can't be a stay-at-home soldier. Come on, somebody. If there's a fight going on, you, you can't fight long distance. You got to be right there in the middle of the action. Say amen, somebody. Glory to God. So we congratulate you today. You may be seated. We congratulate you and we thank God for you. Uh, amen. One more time. Give him a round of applause. It's all right. 
I do want to take this moment while we're talking about this and say if you're interested in furthering your biblical knowledge or want more information about the Potter's House School of Ministry Fall 2023 cohort, uh, please visit thepottershouse.org and select the TPH School of Ministry under the Ministry tab. We also have a scholarship available honoring our late director, Pastor Bonnie Moon Johnson. Amen. 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 I was at the Holy Convocation and I kept in my mind, I kept seeing her sitting in the congregation because I'm so used to her being there and being a part of the service. Uh, we will always miss her, but we want to have a scholarship uh, to earn, to honor her. And if you're interested in going even higher than that, there's always Jake's Divinity School where you can earn a uh, degree uh, in the subject of your church, uh, 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 MDiv or a PhD, we'll go as far as you want to go, accredited and fueled by our associations. Hallelujah, can you say amen? Dr. Vow, would you just stand and represent Jake's Divinity School, Dr. Valerie Crumpton, amen, amen. Amen. She, she's got an earned doctorate degree, but she sang like she had just got through fried chicken up in high ground. I'm telling you, she brought that place down. Thank you, Jesus. God is so good. We enjoyed you so much. It's so good uh, to have such a multifaceted, multi-talented array of people uh, around us. Can you say amen? I do want to uh, mention that Bishop Joel Tudman is, Dr. Joel Tudman is not with us this morning. Uh, he is by the bedside of his father who is transitioning. And uh, I want the church to just pray for uh, the Tudman family during this difficult, difficult time in their life. I'm almost sure that they're streaming online, pulling for strength, pulling for strength. <laughs> Sometimes you have to pull for strength. Hallelujah. Sometimes strength don't walk up to you. You have to pull for strength. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm pulling for strength. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, 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 you look nice, everything. I'm glad to sit beside you, but I didn't come for that. I came to pull for strength. I came to get God to help me to go through this time. I'm going through some things. I'm pulling. I'm pulling. I'm not going to sit here and make the Holy Ghost rustle me down. I'm pulling for strength this morning. I'm pulling for faith this morning. I'm pulling for fire this morning. Say amen. amen. To the Tutman family, we are praying for you. We are standing in solidarity with you. And not only you, but to all of you uh, who are in that same situation and dealing with grief or dealing with sorrow or dealing with bad news in your family. How many people are dealing with some uh, bad news in your family? Would you stand for a moment and let's just pray together. Spirit of the living God, it is in these moments that we recognize how limited we are. We can love to the fullest, but we can't heal and we can't raise from the dead and we can't resurrect. And so there are some things that we are forced to go through, the rain falling on the just and the unjust. Death is not prejudice. It doesn't care what you look like, how much you, what you drive, how much money you make, or what you, how you vote. Death comes to everybody, white, black, or brown, young or old, Gen Z, Gen X. It doesn't matter who you are. It comes to everybody. But Lord, you have taken the sting out of death and the victory out of the grave, and you can do anything but fail. Those that need comforting, comfort them. Those that are going through sickness in their family, strengthen not only the person who's in the bed, but the person who's around the bed, because both of them are being tested to the breaking point. But we have a God who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we may ask or think. And we lean on you now to take us through the tough times, whatever they may be, in Jesus' name. Somebody give him 30 seconds of praise.
my God. We got a whole cadre of uh, VIPs uh, that have been brought to my attention, and I will list all that have been brought to my attention. If I skipped you, it's only because of my office uh, wasn't notified, but I want to uh, acknowledge the, the many guests that are here. Uh, Wanda Ewing, executive board member of Boys and Girls Club, Northeast Ohio. Would you stand? God bless you. God bless you. Welcome to the Potter's House. We're so glad to have you. I know you were here for the cotillion on yesterday. I heard about it. My wife came home all lit up and telling me every little detail. And so we're glad to have you in the service of the Lord with us. Can you say amen for her one more time? The chief marketing officer of Boys and Girls Club is also here. Mrs. Shakira Johnson, would you stand? Northeast Ohio, Shakira, thank you. Thank you for coming down and being with us. We're delighted to have you in the service of the Lord. Pastor Catherine Johnson is in the building. Would you stand? Welcome to the Potter's House, Pastor. We're delighted to have you. Glory to God. Just lift him up. All you want to shout like you do at home because you're in your daddy's house. Our newly elected and appointed Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett is in the building. Would you stand? We're so glad to have you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Looking forward to working with you. She is taking uh, Congresswoman Bernice Johnson's place. Come on, let's make her welcome. Amen. It says a whole lot that you would stop by uh, to see us, and we are grateful to God for each one of you. Uh, we also have Valerie Rivas. I hope I said that correctly. She is the Director, Industry Relations and Multicultural Engagement for PepsiCo. She is a guest of the foundation. Would you stand, Valerie? Where are you? Are you here? Thank you, Jesus. There she is, okay, way over there. Glory to God. We welcome you and give God praise for you. Thank you for being here in the service of the Lord. We need to put you over here where we can see you. She said translation. Okay, okay, all right, okay. She's in translation. <laughs> Pastor Robinson didn't want me fussing out to church. <laughs> He jumped up, he said, she in translation, Bishop. Amen. I don't know whether they have made it yet, but Reverend Quabina Darko and family, uh, if they're not here, they're on their way. Uh, give God praise. They're all the way from Ghana. Amen. We've had the privilege of pastoring uh, the sons of the Darko, sons and uh, daughter-in-law of the Darko for a number of years, you will know and recognize Deacon and Lady uh, Darko, but their father is also a pastor in Accra, Ghana. He's also a businessman and a chicken farmer. Yeah, but don't, don't picture a few chickens in the yard like Mama had. Uh, he did a, a deal with uh, Harlan Sanders that started KFC. They supplied chicken to Tyson's chicken. It's coming from Ghana. He is a very successful multimillionaire in his own right and a preacher and a man of God. And we pastor his grown son and daughter. Let's give God praise. God will take your gift and make room for you. Say amen, somebody. God will take your gift and make room for you. I've known him for years. I met him, oh my gosh, about 30-some years ago uh, at CBN at the 700 Club. And I uh, never forgot him, never get, had any idea that I would get to uh, pastor his sons. What a joy. Bishop Andre Williams is joining us. Bishop, would you stand? Welcome to the Potter's House. We're so glad to have you. Thank you for being here in the service of the Lord. Bishop Jerome Darks, would you stand? Let's get, come on, come on, church. You can do better than that. Let's give God praise for them. Thank God for them. Pastor Sutton, I can't hardly call him a visitor because he's kind of like, 
got a two home complex between being in Baltimore and Lady Sutton are in the midst. Who's a member of the church? You all stand. We want to celebrate you. You're back home. Give God praise for both of them. Amen. In the service of the Lord. Pastor Brandon Jacobs, where are you? God bless you. I knew you were a preacher as soon as I looked at you. Give God praise for the man of God. My grandma would say he looked like a preacher. Well, yesterday, I'm not going to do this because I, I can't do this like my wife can do this. Honey, would you come and talk about... The first lady of the Potter's House, ladies and gentlemen, would you welcome her to the stage? Thank you, Bishop. In the midst of all of the celebration that's going on, I am so blessed to be able to celebrate for the 27th year the debutantes that were coronated on last night at our grand ball. I'm going to ask all of the debutantes that are here today to please stand. You can look at the screen and catch a glimpse of last night. Last night was an event as excellent as you could ever see. They danced, they prayed, the young men escorted them, their mothers and fathers greeted them, and most of all, we presented them that they would always know that the Potter's House of Dallas loves you, celebrates you, supports you, and you know we've got your back. So grateful, so grateful, so grateful. Just watch all of the beauty, the Dallas Mavericks, and the T.D. Jakes Foundation presented the girls with brand new laptops, and it was 39 girls, a check for $100,000, and we raised $350,000 through the hands of our leaders. Please stand, Lady T, Lady Julie, Kemi Sue, I don't know, Jordy, are you out there with the ministers? Elder Reverend Jordy, I'm so delighted, Bishop, that you've supported us for 27 years, and we promise you to do you good and no harm all the days of our lives. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for your vision. 27 years is a long time. Come on, somebody, give it up. Give it up, give it up. If you're watching online, we're starting to develop chapters of our debutante program across the country. It's growing, it's evolving, it's developing, and you can find out more information how you can connect and be a part of that. Can you say amen? amen. Look at your neighbor and say, everything you need everything. is at the Potter's house. <laughs> everything you need. You know what next? Don't forget. Next Saturday, right? Next Saturday, we're celebrating our 28th year. Seven, seven, okay. It's the 27th anniversary of the party. Y'all didn't hear me. 20, for 27 years. For 27 years, we've been preaching this gospel right down here in Dallas. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When I first came here, we didn't even have this building. And the building we had is gone now. It's next, it was next door. We built on top of that. We built this across here. We bought 400 acres of land across the street. We pushed them cows back out of the way and told them the Lord has need of this property. And we kept on keeping on in the name of the Lord. And we're not finished yet. We still got some more to do for the glory of God. Come on here. 
Come on here. You might not have started with us, but I know you got our back right now. We're not the kind of church that just sits on our laurels and has a 20-year building program. When we say we're going to do something, we do it. When we say we're going to build something, we build it. When we say we're going to provide something, we provide it. When we say we're going to feed the community, we do it. When we say that we're going to respond to crisis, we are there on the ground because we got great members in this church who support the vision of this house from generation to generation, many that started with me, many of them have passed on. Now we got fresh recruits coming in to pick up the cross and carry the load and bear the weight. Look at your neighbor and say, we got to carry this forward. You got to carry it forward from generation to generation. That's what God meant when he said, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am the God of all three. Glory to God. God is a generational God. There are blessings. Some of them you're going to get, but some of them are laid up for your children and for your children's children. And some of them don't even know it, but they're getting blessed because you prayed for them. You anointed them. You pleaded the blood. You rebuked the devil and broke generational curses standing on the promises of God. Come on, clap your hands, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm excited about this thing. Listen, I've got some excitement for you. I've got a surprise for you. I've got a whole lot of stuff for you. But the time has come in the service that we honor the Lord with our substance, with our increase. Glory to God. Everything you see and much of what you haven't even seen, our administrative building, our school we built, our neighborhoods we developed, our parking lot, the bridge, with city didn't build that, we built that bridge across there, paid for it. Everything you see, our cameras, our technicians, our crews, our IT people, our accounting firm, our people who are working behind the scenes to make everything function and go correctly. We've never had a problem. We do compliance audits every two years. Our integrity has been impeccable. You never have to wonder where your money's going. When we say we're going to do something, we do it. I want this next generation of members to pick up the cross and not just shout and dance, but support the vision so that we can get your children in the cotillion, so that we can help your sons with excellence. You didn't see no boys standing up there with the pants hanging down and looking all raggedy. They were classy with that thing. Did you see how they kind of they had a little swag with that thing? We're trying to catch your children before they go to the Tory program. Hallelujah. It's nice that we have a Texas Offenders Reentry Initiative, but I want to stop it before they ever get in the system and point them in another direction and show them a career and show them how they can be entrepreneurs and claim the money and be legal and build and own and and buy, and it's all a part of the mission. It's not enough to get people saved if you're not going to disciple them after they get saved and direct them in the right way. Say amen. To all of you that are online, every camera, every cameraman all throughout this room is a professional trained to make sure that you have the best experience possible right there in your living room or on your job around the world. Some of you is in the afternoon. Some of you is late in the evening and you're still watching this broadcast. It's only because we are paying the price to make sure that it is available to you. So when you support it, you are not giving to a man or a person, but the over 325 people who are on staff, who, whose families are fed, are paid through that giving, our building, our technology, our outreach, our television, reaching around the world is only possible because you value what you are receiving. I want to challenge you in this moment to value it and honor God in your giving. The tithe belongs to the Lord. I said the tithe belongs to the Lord. It belongs so much to the Lord that if we don't give it, he said we robbed him. Glory to God. The offering belongs to you, and it is something that you give out of the goodness of your heart. But the tithe is just giving back to God a tenth of what belongs to, of all that you have received, because it all belongs to him. Y'all ain't helping me none at all. I said it all belongs to him. 
He had to show me it all belonged to him. He had to shut down the plan and close off the income and run out of unemployment and say, see, it was me all the time. It wasn't your company, it wasn't your job, it was me all the time. And when you recognize it's me, I'm going to honor you. But you stop honoring me, I'll stop honoring you. Do you not know God bless you with every stitch you got on, every piece of gas you got in the gas tank, every brick, every block in your house, God gave it to you. How many people know? that God's been good to you. I know you're trying to write, but stand up on your feet a minute and just acknowledge everything I got, everything I got, everything I eat, everything I swallow, everything I got belongs to God. So when you see me giving, I'm not doing him no favor. This is not charity work. I'm, I'm just being honest with my partner. He's my partner. We're in a joint venture. He's my partner. He tells me when to say yes and when to say no. And to all of my enemies, when you fight me, you got to fight my partner. Because all of my help and all of my strength comes from the Lord. Can you say amen? amen. Sit down and handle your business as we prepare to worship the Lord in an offering to those of you that are online. The information is on the screen. How you can text to give. All the various devices to which you can sow and acknowledge God. Don't you get arrogant and start thinking that you got it because you're talented. There are talented people in jail. There are talented people sleeping up under a bridge. There are talented people starving to death in other parts of the world and in this world. God's been good to you. Why wouldn't you honor him? and so into the kingdom of God. They're going to minister to you in song, my worship, and then we're going to pray over the seed when I return. God bless you and amen. Our giving is a part of worship, and after you've had the chance to give, I invite you to stand to your feet as we worship some more. Hallelujah. Declare it together, church. Offer it up. He is my worship. All of my worship. All of my worship. Receive my worship. It's all right to lift your hand. All of my worship. Hallelujah. Here is my worship. I offer it up to you, Jesus. My prayer is received. i 
today and I will not be silent I will always yes worship you as long as I am breathing I Standing to your feet, lifting your tithe, your offering up before the Lord, whether it's in your phone, whether it's in your phone or whether it's in the envelope, we wave them like sheaves before you, as they did in the Old Testament with barley loaves and wheat, knowing that if you did not send the rain, there would be no harvest. In that same spirit, we know that if you did not send the strength, there would be no job. If you did not send the health, there would be no income. And as we wave our time and offering, we want you to know that we are conscious. We are not unconscious of the fact that whatever we have has come because you have rained down on us. Thank you for the rain. Thank you for the rain. And there are some of us that feel like we're in a drought season, and yet in the middle of the drought, you fed us. <laughs> Somebody's thanking you because they got a job, but somebody else is thanking you they don't have no job, and you still fed them, and you still made a way, and you still opened a door, and you still provided a car, and we still move around the city. Great is our faithfulness, oh God, unto us. When we wake up in the morning, new mercies we see. All that we need, thy hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness. Lord unto me continue to pour out your blessings upon your people not just in the room but those that are watching on screen 
and those that are watching around the world and those that are just walking in and preparing to sow and those that are even texting right now and throughout the remainder of this service remember our needs we're not bossy enough, authoritative enough, or comprehensive in our intellect enough to tell you how to give it back to us. Because if you only gave it back to us in money and we needed healing, what good would the money be? Somebody needs healing in their body. Somebody needs strength in their life. Somebody just needs to walk up under divine favor. Whatever way you give it back to us, if you give it back to us through delivering our children, if you give it back to us by bringing our son out of jail, any way you bless us, Lord, we will be satisfied. In Jesus' name, shout amen. If you have a tangible seed, pass it all the way to the left. Everybody who touches it blesses it as it goes down. The person on the left is left standing with everyone's seed in their hand. Glory to God. The rest of you may be seated. My God. You all like like you came to have church today. I said, you all like like you came to have church today. Would you bring my envelope? You all like like you came to have church today the black envelope yes you all like like you came to have church today you all like like you came to have church today you all like like you mean business you don't act like you just wandered in here you act like you mean business for the lord you act like you got an expectation that you came to receive something from god glory to god i can feel it in the atmosphere i can feel the glory of the lord in the atmosphere Somebody said, if I could just make it to the potter's house, I don't care how hot it gets outside, I'm going. I don't care if I have to wear a t-shirt, I'm going to the house of the Lord because I want to be in my father's house. Shout amen, somebody. PMTs, serve the people of God. While they serve, would you praise? 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 While they serve, while they serve, while they serve, while they serve, would you praise? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed, let the redeemed of the Lord, let the redeemed, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I feel a blessing coming on. I feel a blessing coming on. From the top of my head, down up under my feet. Hey, I feel a blessing coming on. <laughs> I feel a blessing coming on. I feel the blessing coming on from the top of my head down up under my feet. I feel the blessing coming on. You feel the blessing coming on. Do you feel the blessing coming on from the top of my head down up under my feet? I feel the blessing coming on. God's got a blessing for you. You can have it. Reach out and grab it. God has a blessing for you. One of the many, 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 many blessings that God has comes in human form, wrapped in clay, a treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency may be of God and not of us. Uh, his, he is an author, he is a writer, he is a teacher, he is a graduate of our next door neighbor, Dallas Baptist University. He is currently the founder and prelate of Charisma International Fellowship of Ministries. He is the, I want to say new, but it's not as new as it was, the Impact Church of Nashville located uh, in Tennessee. Can you say amen, somebody? 
He is a son of the house. He grew up here. He ministered here. He taught here. Pastor Derek Faison is in the house. I said, Pastor Derek Faison is in the house. And he brought his lovely, voluptuous bride with him. I will let him introduce his own wife. Would you clap your hands and welcome him as he comes to share the word of the Lord with us? I just want to do a temperature check. If there's somebody in here who has a praise way down on the inside, I know we've had praise and worship already, but if you've got something leaping down on the inside and you just got to get it out, would you take 30 seconds right here and give God your best praise? Come on. Come on. Raise this roof. Raise this roof. Raise this roof. Raise this roof. I don't want to delay service, but I got to get this out. If that's you, get it out right here. Would you shake somebody by the hand and tell them, neighbor, I don't know about you, but God's been too good to me for me to be quiet about it. So you're going to have to excuse me for a minute while I give God a praise. Now come on and do it like you're supposed to. Act like you know. Come on, act like you know. Act like you know up in here. <laughs> be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm so glad to be here on this morning worshiping with you all. This, this was a daddy detour. <laughs> it was a daddy detour. I wasn't supposed to be here, but how many know when your daddy calls you to come serve at his house? You just show up. I'm so happy that, that our church, the Impact Church in Nashville, is, is live streamed with us on this morning. They're all the way in Nashville, Tennessee. You can't see them, but they can see you. They're live streaming at our service on this morning. Would you give God a praise for them? I know. Come on. Make some noise for them. The Impact Church in Nashville. Holding it down, representing. Amen. Come on, make some noise for them. Let them feel you. All the way in Tennessee. Amen. I'm so proud of all the, of them who serve us and help us in the ministry. I'm so happy to be standing. And all of our internet audience, amen, who are watching this stream, amen, from all over Bishop's platform, all over the world. Would you praise God for all of them, amen, who are tuning in with us on this morning. I'm glad you tuned in this morning. This is not by accident that God had you here to hear this today. I want to take this opportunity to, to acknowledge uh, somebody who I've been knowing for 40 years. I stumbled into a little storefront church some time ago. I was broken, running, confused, and walked into a building, and there was a young preacher there. Back then, he was Elder Jakes. <laughs> and he was there beating on that piano and uh, something about what he was preaching captured my heart and connected with him like Elijah did with Elijah. And I determined in that moment when he threw his mantle that wherever he was, there I would be also. And I want you to stand to your feet and acknowledge my father in the gospel, my pastor, my mentor, Bishop T.D. Jakes. Come on. And 
while you're doing that, would you praise God for First Lady Jakes, amen, the woman who stands beside him, laboring in the gospel. Amen. To all the pastors and associate pastors who are working and serving here, praise God for them. Yeah. Yeah, y'all can do better than that. They serve with you. They, they labor with you. They, they work with you. My baby boy, I think he's up there. My baby boy, Bryce, is back there. That's my, stand up, Bryce, let him see you. That's, that's my baby boy. That's the last of the Mohicans. Bryce Faison, amen, grown man. Some of y'all remember him for being over in the children's church, amen. That's my grown boy, that's my baby boy, Bryce. And I would be amiss to begin this service without acknowledging my wife of 27 years. 27 years. Stand up, Lady Tanya Faison. Yep. Come on. Yeah. The first lady of the Impact Church of Nashville, and this weekend just recently ordained as an elder in the Lord's Church. <laughs> so she graduated with all of you. Amen? We're glad for her presence in the house of the Lord on today. I'm on assignment here. And so I don't want to take any more time from the time that we've had. I want you to turn with me in your Bible to Genesis chapter 37 and consider with me a few passages of scripture there. Genesis chapter 37, verses three and four, and then we're gonna drop down to verse 18 through 20. I'm gonna be reading out a New King James version of the Bible. When you have the scripture, say amen. amen. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. Also, he made him a tunic or a coat of many colors. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and they could not speak peaceably to him. Now, Joseph had a dream and he told it to his brothers, and they hated him even more. Drop down to verse 18. Now when they saw him afar off, even before he came near to them, they conspired against him to kill him. They said one to another, look, this dreamer is coming. Therefore, let us now kill him and cast him into some pit, some pit. And what we'll say is some wild beast has devoured him. They lied. <laughs> and then we shall see what will become of his dreams. I want to parse that 20th verse and just bring it into focus here. The idea was to take and put him into some pit, and then we will see. We're going to cast him into some pit, and then we will see what will become of his dream. And I want to use a short subject this morning, a pit can't stop a promise. Did you hear what I said? I said a pit. Would you just encourage somebody sitting next to you, shaking by him, tell him, neighbor, a pit can't stop a promise. Clap your hands and give God praise, why don't you? Father, over the next few moments, I decrease that you may increase. And I pray, God, that you be big in this place. Take over every corner, every pew, every row. Throw your weight around in this place. Be glorified on the next few moments in everything that we say and do. In Jesus' name, 
Somebody shout amen. amen. A pit can't stop a promise. A promise is simply this. It's a commitment made by someone to somebody else to do something. And God is unique, unique in that way when it comes to making promises in that the Bible says that all the promises of God in him are yea and amen. Meaning he is both the promisee and the promisor. He is the confirmation and he is the guarantee of everything that he promises. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. He doesn't just begin a thing, but he's also the one who ends the thing that he has begun. He's the author and the finisher. That when it comes to God, in him are both the promise and the fulfillment of a thing. What am I saying? I'm saying that when God makes you a promise, he takes upon himself the full responsibility of making sure that that which he has promised comes to pass. That he doesn't just make idle promises, he doesn't just put words out there to excite us, to elicit response out of us, but if God ever speaks a word over your life concerning anything, he has determined that he will work alongside you, work with you, even in spite of you, to make sure that that word comes to pass. He is both the promise and he is the fulfillment. Now, somewhere between promise and fulfillment, there is a middle that we all have to contend with. It's like watching a movie sometimes, you know, you, you, that a rerun, something that you've seen before. You already know what the end is going to be. You already know what the outcomes are going to be. However, certain, you get certain comfort in knowing that what the outcomes will be. That's a promise. You already know what's going to happen. God is already predestined. He's already told you what shall come to pass. But there, but there are still some things you may have to go through, some tension you may have to endure in order to get to the end. Beloved, that's the pit. When we talk about the promises of God, we often look at God from the standpoint of mountain peaks or mountaintops. But how many know between every mountain peak there is a valley? There is a low period. There is a period between those two peaks. That is the pit that I'm speaking of. Now, a pit is some obscure place, some sunken place. It's an abyss. It's a place so low that you think you may never come out of it. A divorce can be a pit. A bad doctor's report can be a pit. A failing business that you thought would be successful can be a pit. Losing a job, needing the money, trying to make bills covered, make bills connect, that can be a pit. Losing an opportunity, y'all, can be a pit. Losing your house, losing a child, losing a parent can be a pit. These are sunken places. And these sunken places can throw you so far into depression and hopelessness that it can seem impossible to fully recover from it. How many people know what I'm talking about? To have something hit you so hard that it knocks you to your knees that it takes the wind out of you, that it puts you so far down into a sunken place. Somebody right now is in a sunken place. Bad news, bad information, disappointments have stuck you in a place that feels like a pit. But I've got a promise. In spite of my divorce, I've got a promise. In spite of losing my job, I've got a promise. In spite of having to stand over the coffin of a child that I've had to bury, I still have a promise. And it's that promise that keeps me going forward because a pit cannot stop. Now listen, walk with me. The promises of God are always attached to the favor of God. And when people talk about the favor of God, what they dream about is the good stuff. They dream about the lofty stuff. But might I suggest this morning, beloved, that favor can be both a blessing 
and a burden. It can be both a blessing and a burden. In fact, sometimes when you think about the blessings of God, yes, it opens doors for you. It gives opportunities to you. And maybe you can enjoy some things that you wouldn't normally enjoy because you got favor. Ah, but let me tell you that sometimes that blessing can be a burden in that it invites undeserved, unsolicited attacks and tension. So while I am enjoying the favor that God gives me and the blessing that God releases in my life, I also have to contend with those things that come as a result of that. You do know that everybody is not glad for you. You do know that if you get a promotion on your job, that there is somebody over in the corner cutting their eyes at you. You do know that everybody in your family is not happy that you got a good job or you have a nice home. You do know that everybody who is behind you is not behind you because they're pushing you, but they could be behind you trying to knife you. Not because you're a bad person, not because you're a wicked person, just because I'm a blessed person. We're all the blessed people in here. I don't know. Let me, let me, let me do a check. All the blessed people, identify yourself all the way up there in the balcony. Online, if you're blessed, I want you to type in the field, I'm a blessed person. It's time for the blessed people to stop hiding and pretending that they're not blessed. Make some noise if you're blessed and you know it. Ah, but there is tension when you're a blessed person. There are unusual difficulties that you deal with, some unspeakable things sometimes that you have to contend with when you are a blessed person. There are some things you have to watch out for, some things you can't even describe. The, the normal person doesn't understand what it's like to live with the burden of being favored. In our text, the tension in Joseph's life revolved around a multicolored coat that, get this, he received as a gift from his father. And it was an outward expression of his father's love for him. Now listen, as far as we know, it was not something that Joseph either asked for or prayed for. We don't read anywhere in the text where he went to his father demanding his inheritance like the prodigal son. No, he didn't do that. We don't read, we don't read where, where, where he worked for the coat that he received. Because if he worked for it, Sister Jackie, that would have been compensation. We don't read where he tried to buy the coat. Because true favor can't be bought. He, he didn't earn this coat, this multicolored elaborate coat because of good behavior, because that meant it would have been deserved. The only reason he had this elaborate multicolored coat was because it was bestowed upon him by the Father. And many people spend hours and years and money and all sorts of antics trying to grab a favor trying to buy a favor, trying to manipulate themselves into a favor. But when you, could, when you resort to those kind of antics, you rob God of the opportunity to really be God the Father in your life and bestow something on you that you could not get through your own efforts. Somebody in here right now is living in something that you didn't even ask for, you're living in an opportunity that you didn't even beg for. You're walking into doors that you didn't, didn't have to buy your way into, but it was just God who picked you out of a crowd and said, I'm going to bestow my favor. One thing about it, if God bestows favor upon you, can't nobody stop it. Can't nobody take it. When God blesses a man, can't nobody rob him of it. Oh, my blessed people who know that you have favor, shout and lift this room in this place. I got favor, I got, I got favor, I got, I got favor. 
Favor is like the feeling you get when you've been upgraded to first class <laughs> and you didn't even ask for it. I was prepared to take my seat in coach, but somebody picked me. That's what favor is like. It's like, God, somebody picked you. I want to point to my education. I want to point to my background. I want to point to my connections. I want to point to my training. But the truth of the matter is I'm here because he picked me. Is there anybody knows the feeling when God picks you? He picks you out of the family. You were the worst one in the family. He picked you out of a room full of people. You shouldn't even be having it right now. But he ruled around and said, not you, not you, not you, you. If you know you've been picked. Oh my God, oh my God. Don't hate on me because I've been picked. I didn't even ask for this. God just opened a door for me. And doors God opens, no man can shut. If you're standing in front of an open door right now, would you holler at your boy? Sit down for a minute. I'm, I'm just talking. I'm just talking. Gifting, gifting this young man with the coats was a harmless gesture. Jacob wasn't trying to start no trouble. This was just the case of a father having extraordinary love for a son that spilled over into an extravagant display of affection embodied in a coat. This was just the father being a daddy. This was just the father looking at him and saying, I want to bless you. Let me tell you something about this coat. It wasn't cheaply made. It wasn't a hand-me-down. God's favor on you fits like a tailor-made suit. Yeah. Elder Carla is designed specifically for you. It, it, <laughs> when you get a tailor-made seat, beloved of God, uh, nobody else can wear it but you. Nobody can wear it like you. You might get another suit, but it won't be mine. You might get in the seat, but it won't be mine. What I'm trying to tell you is what God has for you is for you. It is so, God is so specific about what he has for you. See, the suit fits the way it's supposed to fit. It falls the way it's, the way it's supposed to fall. It dips where it's supposed to dip. That's why you ain't got to be jealous of nobody else's blessing because what God has for you is so tailor-made for you. If you try to put it on, it ain't going to work for you. If you try to sit in the seat, it won't work for you. You can sit there, but it won't work for you because the suit was made for you. How many of you know that God has something tailor-made for you? Look at somebody and say, favor looks good on you. Yeah, you might be sitting next to a hater, but look at somebody and say, favor looks good on you. See, when you're really a blessed person, you can't be hateful about nobody else being blessed. I can afford to appreciate you. I can afford to applaud you. I can afford to rejoice with them that do rejoice because the Father loves me too. Look at somebody else and say, favor looks good. Got to take my glasses off. Favor looks good on you. We struggle with it, brother. We struggle with rejoicing with them that do rejoice. We struggle with people who have opportunities that you wish you had. But everybody who knows that the same God who blessed them will bless you. Same God. The same God that lifted you will lift me. The same God to open a door for you will open a door for me. I want every favored person in here to raise the roof and say, I got Stop hating. Stop being mad. Stop being jealous because the same Father who favors me will favor you. It's like being in a line at a movie theater. Every time somebody else moves up, you shouldn't be hating. That just means I'm getting closer to my blessing. Every time somebody gets promoted, you shouldn't get mad. It just means I'm getting closer to my blessing. Every time a door opens for somebody, I don't get mad because it means that the door is still going to be open for me. Look at somebody say, you're next in line. 
You don't believe it. Tell, tell somebody else you're next in line. Oh, favor looks good on somebody in here. Listen. In my estimation, the problem wasn't really the coat itself. It was what the coat represented. Even Jacob, his father, did not know all the plans that God had for this young man. Though he loved him, though he fed him, though he clothed him, he still did not know. He still could not perceive. It still existed outside the realm of his imagination all the things that God would have in store for this boy, which is the case with a lot of people that there's always more in you than people realize. That there's always more in you than people perceive. You cannot allow the opinions of people to limit what you shall be because even the closest people are limited in what they can see that God has in store for you. Yes, I'm your father, but in reality, you have favor with the father. So listen, the coat was prophetic in nature. It spoke to the future estate. And listen, it didn't help that this young man boasted about a dream of being in a position of prominence. It's one thing for me to see you prancing around in this fancy coat. Now you talk about God is going to put you in a place of influence and prominence. And this created, listen y'all, this created issues. This kind of favor created issues for him. So the Bible says that his brothers hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now, I'm turning a corner here. Watch this tension. The brothers suffered from a classic example of what psychologists call displaced aggression. And displaced aggression is when a person is angry, but they cannot direct their anger toward the source without consequences, see? So what they do is they take out their anger on somebody who poses little or no risk. I'm really mad at you, but I have too much respect to confront you, so now I'm gonna take out my anger, my aggression, my frustration on somebody that I perceive is no threat. To me. It's almost like what happens at your job and your boss does something that you don't agree with. You don't take it out on the boss, not if you want to keep your job. But all that aggression and all that anger and all that attitude, you take it out on your other co-workers because that's a lower risk. That's a lower issue. It's like some of you who have children with people that you're no longer with. And what you do is, because you may not be able to confront them or make them feel the pain like you want to, you take out the anger and frustration on the child. And so the child becomes the object of your aggression, but it's really a reflection of the issue that you have with the father. So, 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 so what was really happening here was this means that their actions was, we preach about Joseph being hated, and we got this whole culture I'm a, about haters, and haters hating on me, and haters, but I want you to fall into that culture. I want you to realize that it was never really about Joseph. It was really about his attitude about the father, and this was a reflection of their attitude about the father. Because their issue was, Father, you don't see me too? I mean, you love him and I get that, but you don't see me too? You don't see the contribution that I have? I mean, Reuben was there. If anybody should have got a coat, he was the oldest. He should have got the coat, but he didn't. I mean, come on, come on, come on. Judah was there. Judah was more talented, more gifted. Judah means praise. 
But when God got ready to touch somebody, he didn't pick Judah. Come on, Levi was there. Come on, Levi. Out of Levi would come the priesthood who would work in the temple. And yet when God picked somebody, he didn't pick Levi. My God. Listen, the Bible said he was the son of his old age, but in reality, he was not the youngest son. Benjamin was the baby boy. And you know how you are about the baby boy. The baby gets all the attention. The baby gets all the gifts. The baby gets all the love. But he didn't even pick Benjamin. So all these people should have been and could have been qualified to receive this coach. But they didn't because Joseph was chosen. Where are my chosen people in here? It should have been somebody else. It should have been somebody more qualified. It should have been somebody more gifted than me. It should have been somebody better looking than me. It should have been somebody taller than me. But God chose, oh y'all not gonna get happy in here. I wanna tell somebody today that you weren't picked because you were perfect. You were picked because you were purposed. Purpose trumps gifts. Purpose trumps talent. Purpose trumps people's opinion. There may be people who don't agree that you're blessed, but your opinion does not stop God's purpose. What God has purposed in your, y'all not gonna get happy. What God has purposed in your life trumps what anybody else has to say. If there's anybody that's glad that you are purposed, give God a shout right here. I just, I just, I just. Sit down. Let me talk about this, talk about this. Displace aggression some more. Displaced aggression sometimes manifests itself in how we treat each other. And the church is affected with a disease that allows us to mistreat people in the name of the Lord. And the Bible says, how can you say you love God, the Father, whom you have not seen, and hate your brother or your sister that you see every day? You are a liar, sir. You are an imposter. You are a fraud. How can you say that you hate me? Jesus contended with this all his life. He said, how can you say you love the Father and yet hate me when I am from the Father? I am from the Father's, uh, the Father's loins. I am from the Father's heart. You say that you love him, but what you are displaying is a hatred toward me, which is really some covert, hidden attitude that you have about me. You're just taking it out on my son is revealing the real intentions of your heart. It is revealing the real condition of your spirituality to say that you love God and you shout all over the church and you preach great messages, but you mistreat the people. Know you not that the Holy, that my body is a temple of the Holy Ghost and that when you defile me or defame me, you're not disrespecting me, you're respecting the one who called me, who resides in me, who lives in me. Look at somebody say, you got to stop this foolishness. You got to stop. I don't believe you. And so it manifests itself in hatred towards each other. I'm going to go deeper here. It was a reflection of their attitude about their father. And it was their way of saying, Daddy, you're not fair. You're not treating me fairly. You're not treating me equally. That's it, that's it, that's 
I'm watching you do things over there and I'm waiting my turn and I'm trying to be polite, but it's really getting on my nerves to watch this boy flaunt around here with this coat. And I'm trying to hide my hostility toward him. And I can't bring in myself the ability to speak peaceably to him. You know how they do when you walk in the room, they start rolling their eyes. They can't even look at you. You walk on the job, they can't even say good morning to you. They, good morning. How you doing? You tell somebody to turn to their neighbor and they say, mm -hmm. That's because you accidentally got sat to somebody that's really hating on you, don't like you, and you're in an unfortunate position of having to sit next to them. And every time the preacher says, turn to your neighbor and say, <laughs> Somebody right now is being affected by someone else's displaced aggression. They're really mad at him but they're taking it out on you. Can I go deep just for a minute here? Sometimes the anger that you have is not towards him, it's really the anger you have towards yourself. That sometimes the actions that we carry on to ourself is a reflection of how you feel about yourself. And so this culture of self-hatred, self sabotage, where you do things to yourself. Forget what your haters did. I want to talk to you about the things you're doing to yourself. The decisions you're making about yourself, the positions, the places you're putting yourself in, the things that you're doing. You're talking about the haters and the brothers, but I know what it's like to sabotage your own success. You can't blame it on the devil. You can't blame it on your boss. You can't blame it on your spouse. You can't say, if it wasn't for you, I would have made it. I'm talking to somebody in here who is dealing with self-sabotage. See, if it's my haters that's got me down, I can move away from my haters. I can ignore my haters. I can leave the job and never have to deal with them again. But where do you go when you're trying to get away from yourself? And the decision that you're making, you have to be honest and say, it had nothing to do with her. This was all me. Is there anybody who can say that some things that happened, this was all me? I knew I shouldn't have been in that relationship. I knew I shouldn't have been in that situation. I knew better than what I was doing, but I did it anyway. And the consequences of my decision had nothing to do with you, but it had everything to do with how I saw myself. So the, so the pit that I'm in today, Elder, is the one I put myself in. How many know what it's like to put yourself in a pit? I wish I could blame it on you, but the problem is I can't get away from me with my crazy self, with my self, my low self-esteem, put my, oh my God. This self-defeating talk, this is not the leadership holding you down. This is not people holding you back. This is you holding you back. This is you telling yourself that you're a nobody. This is you telling yourself that you can't get up. This is you telling yourself that you're not worthy. And this self-talk, this self-defeating talk turns into self-sabotage and you are sitting in a pit of your own making. Can I talk this morning? When Joseph's brothers saw him coming, he wasn't even there yet. They just saw him coming. And for some people, you wonder why people hate you because in your opinion, I'm not even there yet. You mad about something that I haven't even realized yet. I'm just coming. I'm just coming down the street. I'm just starting to put my clothes together. I'm just starting to put my business together. I'm just starting to make some contacts. And you are responding to something that hasn't even happened yet. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? For you to just be coming down the road. That's because sometimes people see something on you 
that you may not yet see yourself. Oh, my God. And you owe it to yourself to see what all the fuss is about. All I did was pick a name for the business, and you mad. All I did was pick an office for the business. I ain't even got no customers yet, and you mad. All I did was pick out where I wanted to live. I ain't even bought the house yet. You hating. If you hate now, you better buckle your seat, because what God's about to do is going to knock your socks off. Is there anybody in here that Shout yeah, somebody. Y'all keep jumping up, but y'all got to sit down. Uh, uh, I'm just talking. <laughs> For somebody here, God said they see you coming. You ain't got no license yet, but they see you coming. You ain't got no support yet, but they see you coming. You done walked in the room, and you don't even know what to wear yet. You can't even figure out what's appropriate to wear in that kind of situation, but they see you coming. Look at somebody and say, I'm a comer. I am a comer. What you don't know about me is that I'm a comer. I'm somebody that if I walk in the room, trust and believe, I'm coming after something. I will never walk in the room and just be there to be there. If I walk in the room, if I come to the table, if I come to the job, if I come to the church, trust and believe, I'm coming after something. I want somebody in here who's after something. I'm not idle, I'm not playing, I'm not trying to be seen. That's why I came to church today, because I'm a comer. I'm an overcomer. You can throw obstacles in my way, and I'm going to step over every obstacle. Look at somebody and say, I am an overcoming. You can't be an overcomer if you don't come over something. Slap as many people as you can and tell them, I'm an overcomer. If you're online, type in the chat, I'm an overcomer. That's why the enemy hates you. That's why the devil tried to get you early. That's why he tried to get you while you were still in the crib. That's why he tried to get you in third grade, because I am an overcomer. For some of you, the devil tried to get you early. I'm going to knock you out the box quick because if you fool around and get in the spot, you're trying to get in that devil. Uh oh, I am not supposed to be getting happy yet. If I fool around and get in my spot, no devil in hell is going to get me out. Somebody show us. Come back, Mason. Turn it up, face it. I'm about to. Look at somebody and say, I'm an overcomer. They saw the young man coming, just trying to pull himself together. And they said, let's kill him. That was the conspiracy. Let's kill him. But, but here, here's the mistake they made. Here's the mistake they made. What they said is, if we kill him, then we will see what will come of his dream. In other words, they made a bet among themselves. And the challenge was, if we do all of this to him, the dream must not be that powerful. If it's that powerful that I can kill your dream. See, if you got a dream from God and your boss can kill it, it's not a dream from God. 
if you got a dream from God and your family can discourage you, that's not a dream from God. If God put something down in you and somebody talking about you can make you walk away, that's not a dream from God. But the dream God has inside of you, come on, come on back, face it. Come back, face it. We will see with our own eyes what will become of the dream. And that's what messed God up. God rolled up his sleeves because you know God like a challenge. Every time you tell him he can't do something, get back, Joseph. It ain't about you. They're putting my word on the line. It's not about what you think. It's about what I've called for. And they said that they're not going to see it come to pass. But I come to tell somebody on my way back to Nashville that God said your enemies are going to live long enough to see. to see what God is going to do in your life. Look at somebody and say, you better see this thing. You better see this thing. You owe it to yourself to survive long enough for your enemies to see the Word of God come true in your own life. God's going to preserve them long enough to see you get up, to see you get married again, to see you have a business, to see you have a... Find you about three people and say, you better see this thing. You better see this thing. You better see... What am I saying? I'm saying you're going to live to see it happen. Tell everybody you can, you're going to live to see it happen. Give God a praise if you believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I don't blame you, brother. I would praise him just like that because I believe it. To ensure that this dream would not come to pass, number one, they stripped him. And the mistake that the brothers made was they thought if they took the coat, they could take the favor. All this fuss about a coat this fuss about a position, all this fuss about an opportunity, all this hatred going on about a coach. So they stripped him of his coach because they thought if I take his coach, they would take the favor. I come to tell somebody who is determined to take my coat, if that's the thing that's bothering you, here. Make me take my coat. Here, take my coat. Take my seat. Take my position. Take my opportunity. Take what's in front of me. But you can't take my favor. You can strip me of my position, but you can't strip me of my favor. Take it. Favor of God is on my life so strong, you can take my coat and I'll still get up. The coat I have is so strong, it's going to look up and find me in Pharaoh's house because it's not the coat. It's not what's on me. It's what's in me. That's what the devil's mad about. You kick me out the job, but you can't take the favor because the favor not what I'm wearing. It's what's in God. I got to get out of here. It reminds me, hold on. 
It reminds me of what they did to Jesus. When they crucified him, they stripped him. And they started gambling for his garments because they thought that the value was in the garments. So they stripped his body, but they couldn't strip him of his anointing. God said to tell somebody in here, stop arguing with people. Stop fighting with people. Stop being mad with people. Stop arguing about who you are and pushing your way in with your elder badge on. I'm elder so-and-so. Shut up. Take off the badge, but you can't take off me. Okay. They took Jesus' garments, brother, but they couldn't take his glory. For somebody in here, the devil's frustrated with you because I took your garments, but I couldn't take the glory. If you're really anointed, I'm anointed at church. I'm anointed in the streets. I'm anointed across town. I'm anointed in another city. I'm anointed in another state. The anointing that you have, the favor that you have, it will go with you all the days of your life. I wish somebody, they can stick you in a pit and you'll still have glory. Let me talk about the sinking. They said, let us throw him in a, some, some pit. And, and can I be honest with you? Everything looks different from a sunken place. Everything looks different from the position of a pit. My problem is I'm in this low place and, and, and I've gone lower than I ever thought I would be. I know that life can get hard. If you live life at all, you're gonna go through something. But I'm talking to somebody in here who's in something and you're going lower than you ever thought you could be. Woo. I'm, in a, I'm in a sunken place and it doesn't look like what I saw in my dream, oh God. It doesn't look like I'm going forward. I'm going backwards. I want to talk to somebody in here that God has given you a glimpse of your future. And instead of you moving towards that future, it looks as if you're going backwards from that future. Instead of you making steps up the ladder, you're taking steps down the ladder. And you're now in a low, sunken place too steep to climb out of, too deep to get out of, and somebody's in something that's so steep and so deep that it's starting to make you doubt the dream that God gave you in the first place. What do you do when the thing that God told you is not realizing your life? I'm going to tell you, hold on. <laughs> Why am I holding on, preacher? Because Joseph had no idea how far his life was going to go. He was going to go further than his father's reach. I was born in a good family. I was born in a good church, but I'm going to go further than even my father's reach. I'm going to go further then my brothers reach. Your hands put me in a pit, but where God has taken me is so far beyond your reach that what you said is not going to even matter. I'm coming to tell somebody you got to stop arguing with petty people because where God's taking you is going to be so much further. He was going to go as far as being in the throne of Pharaoh. You got to hold on because from a pit, from a sunken place, Joseph never saw an Ephraim and a Manasseh. 
from the pit. It's hard to imagine that I'm going to have two kids, two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, which means forgetful and fruitful, that God's going to push you into a place that you're going to forget everything that happened in your father's house. You're going to forget everything they tried to do. Oh, God. God is going to make you, for God's going to bless you so well, you're going to forget. I don't remember what they said. I don't remember what they did. I don't remember the argument. I don't remember the conversation. What you say, Paul? Forgetting those things. Which are behind me. You'll know you're in the spot when God gives you the power to forget. I can let go of my anger because I forgot what you did anyway. I can let go of what you said about me because I don't remember anyway. I can forget the fact that you left me. I can't even call your name back again. God will bless you so good you won't even remember. Oh, my God. Look at some eyes. I'm, I'm forgetting some stuff. Some of you can't go forward because you're trying to carry issues and attitudes forward. And if you're going to go forward, you got to leave some stuff behind. You got to let some stuff go. You can't be big when petty has got you. You got to let some stuff go. You got to let some people go. You got to let some situation. I know you want revenge, and I know you want some get back. But God said, if you just let it go, I've got more in your future than your brothers could ever even imagine. If I'm talking to somebody in here, would you make some noise? If I'm talking to anybody, Find you about three people say, I'm forgetting, I'm forgetting, I'm forgetting, I'm forgetting. Sometimes, sometimes the blessing is just in letting it go. It's just forgetting. It's just getting past it. But there's more. I'm not just going to let you forget. I'm going to cause you to be fruitful. Where are you going to do that at, God? I'm going to make you fruitful right in the land of your affliction. That means the thing you're standing in right now, God said right here, stop your foot. Right here in this spot, in this place, in this city, in this church, in this position, God's gonna cause me to be fruitful. I'm in a pit now, but I'm gonna be fruitful later. I will say that, Lord. What you saw as a pit, God saw as a launching pad. Somebody's crying right now because their life is in a pit. I'm in a financial pit. I'm in a relational pit. I'm in an emotional pit. My business is in a pit. I can't see my way out of this. I don't know how God is going to accomplish what he did, what he's talking about doing in my life. I don't know how this is going to ever come to pass. I've run out of resources. I've run out of uh, 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 connections. I've run out of opportunities. How am I going to make this happen? And you're sitting in a pit right now being all disoriented, and God said you're going to have to change your perspective because what you think is a pit is really a launching pad. It's like a bow on an arrow. It's like a string on a bow. And the further back I pull you, I'm going to pull you into obscurity. I'm going to pull your name out of people's mouths. I'm going to pull, they're not going to invite you to a lot of stuff. They're not going to ask you to come to the party. They're not going to ask you to come to the cantata. They're not going to ask you to come to the event. They're going to accidentally, unintentionally leave your name off the VIP list. And God said, I'm pulling you back. But while I'm pulling you back, the further back I pull you, the further you're going to fly. Everybody that believes you're about to fly, would you give God a shot? do this. He's pulled me back as far as I can go. He's pulled me back as far as I can reach. But in just a minute,
Atlanta. I'm about to. You ain't gonna fly. You ain't gonna fly. Pull on somebody and tell them pull on your string. Let God pull on your string. Let God pull on your string. He's pulling you back for a reason. He's about to let you. Oh my God, I sense in this room that God's about to let somebody fly. Oh my God, is that you? I'm about to fly. I'm gonna fly so far, you're not gonna be able to touch me. I'm gonna fly so far, you won't even know me. Somebody show ya! I'm gonna take you so far, Joseph, they're not gonna recognize you. I'm gonna take you so far, they're not gonna be able to touch you. Put on somebody and say, you're not gonna be able to touch me. Can't touch this, can't touch this. You thought that the pit was gonna kill me, but I'm... I come this morning like a person who came out of a pit and I came to testify that a pit can't stop. Lift your hands and say, God, I praise you for my pit. God, I praise you for pulling me back. God, I praise you for pruning me. God, I praise you for pulling me back. God, I praise you for holding me down. God, I praise you for putting me in the back corner for a little while because I would have never gone as far as I could go. You've been crying about your disadvantages, but God said your disadvantages was the thing I used to propel you to great heights. Oh my God, if you're in a pit right now, but you sense that you're about to have great heights, give God a shout right here. Oh, I got to go, I got to go, but I gotta tell you this one last thing. I want to tell you about the saving because here's the issue we don't know how long Joseph was in the pit all we know is that his brothers went to get something to eat we don't know how long it was there and I'm talking to somebody who's in something right now and you're thinking I'm in this longer than I should have been I'm in this situation longer than I thought I would be I'm in this relationship longer than I thought I would be. I've been nursing this broken heart longer than I thought I would have to. I've been dealing with unemployment longer than I thought I would. I've been trying to get this business off the ground longer. It should have been there by now. When I first got in the pit, I thought it would be maybe a few hours. But a few hours have turned into a few weeks. And weeks have turned into months. And months have turned into years. And I'm talking to somebody who's been living in a pit for years. I come to tell you, help is coming. Let me tell you how insensitive people are when you're in a pit, brother. When you're in a pit, people start saying really insensitive, mean things. They look at you and say, why are you in here this long? Why are you still here? Why don't you just will yourself out of this pit? Why don't you just will, why don't you just pull yourself together? Why don't you just practice some positive thinking? some positive mantra. Why don't you just get yourself, pull yourself up by your bootstraps? But well, I'm gonna tell you, there are some pits that are so deep and that are so steep that you can't get yourself out of it. There are some things you can fall in so far that you, all the positive thinking you can muster up still won't get you out of it. There are some things you can get in so far that that all the things that you're trying to do to pull yourself up by your bootstraps still won't work.
But there's a turning point about to happen. And what happened was the Midianites came by. And when the Midianites came by, his brothers took him out the pit to sell him to the Midianites. I come to tell somebody that help is coming, but it may not come from the hands of the ones that put you in. You got to stop going back to people that hurt you and people that broke you expecting to get help. For what God's about to do in your life, God's about to touch somebody you may not even know. Help is coming. Look at someone say, help is coming. It's coming from unexpected places. It's coming from unusual places. It's coming from people that's not in your culture. It's coming from people that's not of your background. How many know when you need help, you don't care what it look like? It can be black, it can be white, it can be Asian, it can be a man, it can be a woman. All I know that I need help. I've been waiting in a pit for a long time, waiting on my brothers to behave, waiting for somebody to grow a conscience. Waiting for somebody to sorry, suddenly feel sorry for what they said or what they did. And you may not ever get an apology. And you may not ever get them to come back and acknowledge they were wrong. But don't worry about it because God's got some people. And this is going to be a turning point in your life. Somebody look up and say, this is a turning point. This is a turning point. And in this turn, God's about to launch you into everything that he promised you. They're going to reach down and pull you out of a pit, but this is just the beginning of what God's about to do in your life. Look at somebody say, I thank God for beginnings. Let me, let me close with this. Let me close with this. Forty years ago, I walked into a storefront church where my pastor was playing. I was 17. He might have been about 26, 27, somewhere around in there. And I connected with this man of God, and he's always been my father, and he's been my mentor. And, and he's been with me these last 40 years. <laughs> through every difficult, through every challenging, through every heartbreaking moment in my life. And, 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 I, and I, one of the things that I enjoy is sitting at his feet as a son who was learning, who was listening. People always talk about, if I, get, if I ever get a chance to talk to Bishop Jakes, I would tell him I wasn't that son. When I got in the presence of my father, I sat and I shut up. When you're in the presence of somebody who's anointed and gifted, you got to be quiet. So even at the dinner table, I was not that son bishop who always had something to say. It wasn't that I didn't have something to say, it's just that I was absorbing. I was learning. I was listening. And I could fill this room with the knowledge that he's passed on. I could fill this room with the wisdom. I could fill this room. I could take all day sharing stories and lessons about the things he's taught me. But one thing I will give you a nugget about that has served me all my life. See, because what he didn't know is when I fell up in his little storefront church, me and God had had a conversation. And uh, I was hanging off of the edge of the Canal River Bridge in Charleston, West Virginia, ready to commit suicide. I never told him that. I was hanging off the edge, brother, by one arm. I wasn't a Christian then, I wasn't saved then. I was hanging off by one, the middle of the winter, Sister Jackie. And in that moment, I decided to make a deal with God. And I said, God, I've tried a lot of things. I've tr tried a lot of situations. I've tried the sex, I've tried the drugs, I've tried the alcohol, I've tried anything that my little wicked imagination can come up with and I was still broken and empty and thirsty. But I heard somebody say that if you give Jesus a try, that Jesus satisfied. So hanging off of the bridge with one arm, 
I said, God, this is a deal I'll make with you. I'm going to give you one year to prove yourself to me. And if you don't prove yourself to be God in that year, I'll meet you back at this bridge, at this bridge. Well, needless to say, I haven't been back to that bridge. <laughs> it's been 40 years. I haven't been back to that bridge because God began to prove himself and he did it through this man of God. And one of the lessons, one of the nuggets, I'm done. One of the nuggets I got from him was that sometimes when it comes to the enemy, I've made some mistakes, y'all. I've made some mistakes. We talk about people throwing you in a pit. I don't know it's like to throw my own self into a pit. And it was so embarrassing, and I was ashamed, and I was broken, and I didn't want people to see me, and I didn't want nobody to even know it, and I was heartbroken, and I was ripped apart, and I didn't think I'd ever get out of it. And one of the things my pastor told me is sometimes to get the victory over the devil, the best thing you can do is just show up. Y'all not hearing me. Y'all not hearing me. When you do things in your life that everybody's talking about and everybody's writing about and everybody's commenting about and everybody got an opinion about, even people who didn't know me, people who knew me feel obligated to tell people that never met me, well, you know who that is, right? <laughs> Let me update you on who that is. So I didn't just deal with old people, I dealt with new people, a new generation of folks that didn't even know what they was talking about. And I didn't want to even show my face. And I remember I just came and just sat. I didn't come and preach. I didn't come and testify. I didn't come and look for a seat. I just sat right over there. I just sat in the room. And what you have to understand was that just coming in the room was a victory. Just coming in the room. Sometimes when the enemy has made a bet against you, sometimes just showing up, just showing up, just walking in the room is a victory. Look at somebody say, show up. The greatest thing you can do when things go wrong in your life is just show up. Don't run, don't quit. I know this is an age where people would prefer to watch online rather than be in the room and you live here physically in the city, but I'm telling you there's something about showing up in the room that there are certain things that happen in the room that you cannot experience through the TV screen. That philosophy has served me all my life. LeDrew, even when I wanted to walk away, I pulled myself together and I walked in the room and I just show up. I had an elder at my church that walked out and on his way out the door, he shook my hand and he said, this will never work. Walked out of my church in Nashville, Tennessee and shook my hand and said, this will never work. And what I said was, well, we're going to see. Because one of the things that people underestimate about me, Sister Jakes, is how resilient I am. They underestimate how relentless I am. That when I get my mind on something, I will come after you like a pit bull. You won't be able to get it off of me. You won't be able to stop me. I am resilient. I am tenacious. And he underestimated how resilient I am. So as soon as he said it, something leaped up in me. And I said, I'm going to show up for this fight. And we started working our little church down here and we started fighting and we started struggling and we tried to get this church to get where it's supposed to be and it's a little church it just started a couple years ago and we were in a position to either buy 
the building we're in or you're going to have to leave. That's how dire it was. And the same brother came back to me. He didn't come to my face, though. He sent through email and said, I told you it wouldn't work. But I kept knocking on doors. I kept knocking on doors. And every door I knocked on, they kept saying, we can't do nothing for you. It's not going to happen. I had about 90 days to make it happen. Kept knocking on doors. The list of places that I was knocking on, the list, the, sh the list began to get shorter. Everybody's saying no. Everybody's saying it ain't gonna happen. Everybody's saying that you can't do nothing for you. Everybody's saying you don't have enough resources. You ain't got enough support. You don't have enough background. You don't have enough education. You don't have enough roots in this city to do something on the scale that you're trying to do it. And in the last hour. I'm just testifying. In the 11th hour, when they said we get ready to come get the building, and I'm still preaching, and I'm still leaping, and I'm still clapping, and I'm still dancing, and I'm still talking about what God's going to do in this city, and how God's going to bless us, and how God's going to move in our life, and they were saying we come in to get the building. I run out of options. I run out of, people to, out of people to call. I run out of banks and financial institutions and even people who bragged that they could get it done couldn't get it done, Sister, Je Sister Faith. But one person, one person decided to have a conversation with us. And, and here's what's interesting. They were prepared to say no. They were going to prepare to say no too. But my broker said, I've set up a meeting with you in this financial institution. And he said, Faison, when you get in there, all I want you to do is tell them about your vision. I'm going to give you about five minutes. But in that five minutes, tell them what you've been through. Tell them what you came out of. Tell them what you've withstood. Tell them about what God's going to do in your life. Tell them about where you're planning to go. Share with them your heart and your vision and what you want God to do and where you expect God to go. And you walk in there and you tell them with everything you got, what you see in your spirit. So I straightened my tie and I sat at my kitchen table and did a Zoom call with about five boys on the phone and I started telling them with everything I had, with everything I knew, with everything that was in me, I started telling them what I believed what God was going to do. I started telling what I saw in my spirit and in my mind and in my heart and by the time we got done with that call those men were prepared to give us 1.4 million I'm going home I'm going home if you don't shout they were prepared to give us 1.4 million dollars Because a pit can't stop. I'm supposed to close all my building this week, y'all. I, I got detoured and came to daddy's house, but on my way back home to sign my papers, I came to tell somebody who's in a pit right now that that pit can't stop your promise. Give God a shout in here. I said, give God a shout in here. Give God a shout in here. I was, it's a coincidence that I am in this kind of battle, Bishop, at this point in my life. Because this year, like I said, marks 40 years. And I started thinking about the significance of 40. And I found out that 40 symbolizes a period of testing and trial and probation. What I'm trying to tell somebody is that your probation period is over.
You've been in a pit, but your probation period is over. It ain't got to be 40 years. It could have been 40 minutes. It could have been 40 days. It could have been 40 hours. But I want everybody that knows that this is the end of an era. This is the end of a period. Israel walked around in the wilderness for 40 years. At the end of that 40 years, they were blessed to go into their promise. I come to tell somebody, you're about to come into your promise and everything that got away from you and everything that God promised you and everything the devil tried to steal, you're about to get it back. Your testing period is over. Your time of trial is over. Your days of crying are over. Your days of walking around worried are over. Your days of sitting on the edge of the bed wondering what God's going to do is over. That's my prophetic word to you. I don't know who I'm talking to. Maybe you're in the balcony or maybe you're in the back of the room, but that's a word for you. Your probation period is over. You're about to walk into everything that God has for you. You're about to walk. This is happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. You're about to walk into everything that God has promised. Your kids are about to come back home. Your marriage is about to get on track. Your business is about to take off. Your ministry is about to open up. Your doctor's report is about to be good. This period is... Shout yes if you believe it! Shout yes if you believe it! Forty. Forty. 40, that's, that's, that's the number, that's the number God told me 40 and I don't know who I'm talking to in here but if you connect with the fact that you're about to go into your new experience this is what I want to do real quick I want everybody in this room to get an offering in your hand of at least $40 everybody 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 that believes that God's about to take me into something he's about to push me into something I believe that God's about to take me into something I've never seen I've been held back long enough I've been held down long enough I've stood in the face of the critics. I've stood up the people that said it won't work for me, but I declare in this moment that God's about to transform the season in your life. If you agree with that word, I want you to get an offering in your hand. This is the last time. Everything you've been believing God for is about to change. I'm about to turn that marriage around. I'm about to turn those kids around. I'm about to turn around everything that happened to you. I'm going to make everything that happened to you suddenly make sense. I'm going to make people like you that didn't like you before. I'm going to make people support you that don't even know who you are. Good God Almighty. I want everybody to get an offering in your hand. $40. $40. My season is over. I'm about to step into my season. This marks a decade for me. This marks, this, this marks a turning point for me. This marks a turnaround for me. Hallelujah. I'm going to do it. He's going to do it for you, brother. He's going to do it for you. He's going to do it for you. This is the turning point. This is not by accident that you're here on today. This is a turning point in your life. People are looking at you and they don't even understand what you've been through and what you had to endure and their opinions have kept you in a pit and they've kept you from being what God has called you to be. But today I declare by the word of the Lord that the hand of God is on you right now. Hallelujah. Lift your hands right here and receive this moment. Yes, there's no devil that can hold you. There's no sin that can hold you. There is no trial that can hold you. There's no mistake that can hold you. Forget these people and reach to your God. Somebody give God a shout in here. Give God a shout in here. Listen, if you got that $40 in your hand, would you run up here real fast? Would you run up here real fast? I want to connect with you. Just run up here as fast as you can. Even if you put it in a phone, I want you to run up here real fast because we're about to go into a new season. Good God Almighty, I'm getting out the way so some new sons can come in, so some new daughters can come in. I just came as a sign. This was a detour that God led me on to tell somebody that this day is over and a pit. You believe it? 
Lift your hands right there. I believe it. Lift your hands right there. I receive it. I, that's my word. That's my word. Lift those gifts up before the Lord. That's my word. That's my word. That's my word. They're coming out of the balcony. They're coming from the back of the room. Hallelujah. They come from all over. They're lifting up their phones and their electronic devices. Good God Almighty. From all over the room, they're coming. From all over the room, they're coming. For all over the room, they're coming. Somebody, I told them at least 40. For somebody, it's going to be 400. For somebody, it's going to be 4,000. Hallelujah. But God said, I want you to obey my voice. Don't let what Faison told you to do limit you. I want you to hear the voice of the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm touching and agreeing with you that God's about to change the season in your life that every pit they threw you into you're about to come out of it I'm coming out of a financial pit when I sowed this seed today I'm coming out of everything that the devil said wasn't gonna happen I'm coming out of people's opinions I'm coming out of people's ideas I'm coming out of self-talk I'm coming out of sabotage I'm coming out of it right here lift that gift before the Lord that's still coming lift that gift before the Lord lift that gift before the Lord Lift that gift before the Lord. Lift that gift before the Lord. For somebody you just like me, they're betting against you. They walked away from you and said, it'll never happen for you. You're too black. You're too young. You're a woman. You're a man. You have limited education. You don't have the training. You don't have the right connections. You made too many mistakes. All your business is out there. Ain't no way in the world God's gonna do that for you. You know how deep that pit is? Do you know how long people will keep their foot on you if you let them? But I'm turning a corner. I'm turning a corner and these enemies that you see today <laughs> Somebody needs to take out their phone and take a picture because this boy you see today. <laughs> when God brought Joseph back into the presence of his brothers, they didn't even recognize him, bruh. Do you believe that God would do something in your life so crazy that people they thought they knew you, you don't know me. They're not going to recognize you. You're going to have to reintroduce yourself to them because they're not going to recognize you. Last time I saw you, you was catching a bus, and now you riding through in a bit. Oh, y'all. Last time I saw you, you were living on your mama's couch, and now you buying houses. Last time I saw you, you needed a loan, and now I'm in a position I'm giving loans. Because a pit can't stop a dream. I might go through trouble, but you can't stop me. I might be disappointed, but you can't stop it. You might be delayed, but you can't stop it. Just somebody say, you can't stop it. You'll know that God has done a work in your life. When the realization comes to you, this will help somebody that's mad at people. When the realization comes to you that it wasn't them that sent you here. That's what happened when Joseph finally met his brothers. He was able to release animosity and anger because he realized that it wasn't you that brought me here, but it was God. And even what you meant for evil, God meant for good. He used it to push me into something that I never imagined. This offering right here is going to be a push. It's going to be a push. Lift it up right here. Father, I thank you. This offering right here is going to be a push. For somebody, it's going to push you into your destiny. It's going to change the season in your life. It's going to change the trajectory of your life. It's going to be the turning point. This is as low as you're going to go. This is as far as you're going to go. God said, I'm stopping it right here. And suddenly everything about you is going to be up. 
Somebody shout up. Everything is going to be up until it's stuck. You don't hear me. It's up and it's stuck. Somebody say, it's up and it's stuck. When it's stuck, it stays right up here. You don't read what Joseph's life ever went down again. Somebody shout, it's up and it's stuck. We praise you for it right now. We thank you for the miracle, for the gift right now. We thank you for what you're doing in this house and in the lives of your people. Thank you for making us a witness and a testimony of what you're able to do in Jesus' name. Somebody give God a shout as you sow your seed on today. If it's up, give God a shout. If it's up, give God a shout. If your life is coming up, give God a shout. On your way back to your seat, snap as many people as you can and say it's coming up. It's coming up. It's coming up. It's coming up. Let me get your attention for just a moment. Let me get your attention for just a moment before you go back to your seats. Everybody that's got envelopes, pass them up. Envelopes, pass them up through the crowd till they end up on the altar. I wanted to go on the altar as a sweet smelling sacrifice before God. If you're giving on your phone, it's okay, but just pass the envelopes up. I see groups of envelopes, pass them up. If you're in the aisle and you've got envelopes, pass them to your left. If you're online and you're sowing seeds, this is, let me show you something. Can I, can I be honest for a minute? This is the top of the message I preached last Sunday. You remember I preached about the prodigal son? And how you have to wait? I waited on him. I waited. I waited. And I waited. And they called me a fool. And I kept waiting. But can you see what God has done? Can you see what God has done? Love is hard and tough and it's not easy and it's messy, but it's worth the wait. It's worth the wait. You can teach a man scripture and you can teach them style, and you can even teach them technique, but you cannot teach them authenticity. You have to go through your own hell and your own pit and your own sorrow to legitimize your ministry, lest you just imitate everything you heard somebody else do. But I believe that that was a real anointing up in this place. How many folk feel like you heard from God up in this place? And that's why I want your envelope on the altar. I want it on the altar because God put this young man on the altar and laid him bare and stretched him wide. And it was a sacrifice, Abraham, Isaac sacrifice. And I don't mean for no little short time. That stuff he talking about is over years. But God, when he have a plan for your life, not even you can derail the purpose of God in your life. You can make it hard, <laughs> you can make it real hard. Make it easy on yourself. Now listen to me good. Listen to me good, and I won't keep you long. You're watching online, listen to me good. There are some sons and daughters in this room who have had complicated lives. You made some like terrible messes. 
And some of it was imposed on you, and some of it you did to yourself. And some of it you self-sabotage. And you think we can't relate. The people in the pulpit came from the pews. The people in the pews came from the street. Stop trying to make it deify us. We're human. God meant for us to be human so we could relate to you. You hear what I'm saying to you? I know there's a lot of people out there on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter talking about how perfect they are and how holy they are and holiness of hell and da 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 You can go down that road if you want to. But I passed by that store on the way over here. And I found out I don't care how long your dress is, I don't care what you don't wear. <laughs> I did that on the way over here. And, and, and some of the people who are the most critical of other people are trying to distract from their own failures and flaws. If everybody in here wasn't a mess, Jesus wouldn't have needed to die. He had to die. You might be in the middle of your pit and wrecked everything and the kids is a mess, and the wife is a mess, or the husband is a mess, or the job is a mess, or you've been set back. And, and at that low point in the pit, the devil will tell you, he didn't say this, but I'm going to say this, the devil will tell you, kill yourself. Uh, people don't know when they put their mouth on you when you're down, how vulnerable you are. And sometimes a, a, a tweet, you had to fight all night over a tweet from somebody who, who don't even know you. But they caught you down. And your strength that you see now, he didn't always have that. When he was sitting out there in that pew, he didn't, he didn't have that. Samson traded at the mill a long time before his strength came back. Your strength is going to come back. It's going to come back. Your purpose is going to be fulfilled, and God is not going to change his mind. Now, what he probably don't know is last Sunday I preached about the father waiting on the son with the prodigal son, and my subject was it's worth to wait. give God some praise this morning. Come on and give God some praise this morning. Hallelujah. We are so blessed to be in this house this morning. Did y'all enjoy the word? Did you enjoy the worship experience? If you didn't know, you should know by now we are in a blessed house. We have a gem of a pastor and a first lady who didn't been through a little something that they can pour out in us and we are so thankful that the pit doesn't stop his promise hallelujah and I don't want you to miss your opportunity we did pastor took up offering here I don't want you to miss your opportunity to get into the wave of what God is getting ready to do for us so the same type of thing pull out your phones get your envelope whatever you would normally do for offering we want to go ahead and make sure that we collect your forty dollars as well go ahead and sow into your future and while pastor was even preaching, it's so good. This word, you go ahead and prepare, but this scripture dropped into my spirit, so I'm going to read it to you. It's Amos chapter 9, verse 13 through 15. And I'm going to read it through the message translation because that gives you the real a little bit. It says, yes, indeed, it won't be long now. God's decree. Things are going to happen so fast. Your head will swim, one thing fast on the heels of the other. You won't be able to keep up. Everything will be happening at once. Everywhere you look, blessings, 
blessings like wine pouring off the mountains and hills. I'll make everything right again for my people. They'll rebuild the ruined cities. They'll plant vineyards and drink good wine. They'll work their gardens and eat fresh vegetables, and I'll plant them in their own land. Never again will they be uprooted from the land that I've given them. God, your God, says so. I don't know if you believe. I believe we're moving into a season of hastening where God said I will hasten to perform the word. I will hasten. So every time what he's doing for the church, the doors he's opening for pastor, the doors he's opening for the church, so shall he do for us. And I thank God for it. So go ahead and get your seed. Go ahead and plant it. This is good ground. This is fertile soil. You can best believe, you can count on God that what you do for this building, what you do in his behalf, he will make good for you. Go ahead and give your giving. Ushers, do what you do. We thank God for what he's doing in this season. I believe it's hastening season. Everywhere we look is going to be blessing. Everywhere we turn is going to be blessing. Overflow coming in this house. Overflow coming into your house. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We, we want to make sure before we leave today, if there's anybody here that needs prayer, Anybody in here that needs to know Jesus? Anybody in here that wants to receive the Holy Spirit? Anybody here who wants to join? We want to make sure that you have an opportunity. That you have an opportunity. As Pastor said, and as Bishop Jake said, we know that the pit won't stop your promise. That you could be going through all kind of hell all kind of hell in your finances, relationships, on your job. But whatever it is, it cannot and it will not stop what God has for you. You got too many witnesses here in the building. Anybody a witness that God will, God will do exactly what he said he will do. He can't be nobody else but God. And we thank him for it. So if that's you, you need prayer for anything, come on down to the altar. You have ministers standing around ready to pray and receive you. Come on down. Hallelujah. We bless you, God. Come on down. Oh, we rejoice with you. We rejoice with you. Ha ha. We rejoice with you. Glory to your name. We rejoice with you. No devil in hell can stop you. No devil in hell can block you. Hallelujah. We rejoice with them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Bless your name, Jesus. Glory, glory. If you're in a pit and you need somebody to help you up, come on down here. We're going to touch and agree with you and put our faith with your faith. Put our heart with your heart. And we're going to lift up the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God. We thank you, Jesus. There's no shame. There's no condemnation. There's nothing that can block what God is going to do in your life. We thank you, Lord God, that the blood of Jesus covers her. We thank you, Lord God, that the blood of Jesus keeps her. We thank you, Lord God, that no weapon in hell can prevail over her life. We thank you, Jesus, that you are Lord over all. We thank you, Lord God, hallelujah, that she's redeemed of the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. Woo, glory to your name, God. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Woo, there is no weapon formed against you that can prosper. Woo, bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Lord God. Hallelujah. Y'all pray, pray in the Holy Spirit. If you have the Holy Spirit, pray, pray. Oh, whatever need is in the house, Lord God, you meet the need. Oh, Rabasha, we thank you, Lord God. Woo, thank you, Jesus, for hastening to perform your word that you're faithful to do exactly 
what you said you do. Hallelujah. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. You're worthy. Can we sing that together? We give you all. believe it, sing it, that he's worthy. it out the fruit of your lips. Sing it. All the glory. this morning for the word that came forth and meets us in every place that we stand God we thank you Jesus we thank you for being just exactly who you are you are the great I am you are the great Jehovah and so we bless you Lord God as we go about our week this week God help us to see you and experience you in a different way help us to know you and hear you clearly Lord God Hallelujah. Cover us, cover our families, cover our children with the blood of Jesus. No weapon tailor-made, fashioned, or formed against us will ever prosper. We thank you, Lord God. Bring Pastor back home safely. We cover Lady T and their family, their children. Lord God, meet every need. Replenish them in the name of Jesus. So we thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise because you're worthy. It's due you. It is due your name, God. So we bless you and we thank you 
in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.